there is literally nothing worse than when you got a guy on your mind, pause, and you want him bad, and your league mate, your idiot league mate walks up there and slaps that player's sticker right up on the board. And everybody moans and everybody grunts, and you're sitting there like, fuck, you sniped me. Five players that you cannot let your idiot league mates snipe you on this year in your fantasy draft. You might let them fall a little bit. You say, hey, they haven't broken out yet. This is what typically happens. You have guys who haven't broken out yet. So you keep thinking, oh, my idiot league mates might not know about him or they might not know how good he's going to do this year. So I'm going to let them fall to me one more round and one more round and one more round until <laughs> boom. Sniped. You don't want to miss on these seven players. You also do not want to miss out on the project of our lifetime that we have launching next week. A lot of y'all heard about the Big Dog Bash that we announced about a month ago. We are going live with it next week. It is the BDG3 pass. Yes, we are going into the NFT space. If you don't care for NFTs, I don't care. You don't have to watch this. You don't have to participate. You could just move along to the fantasy football content. If you want the ability to come into our office, literally come into our office and hang out with us, the BDG3 pass does just that. If you want the ability to come meet us at tailgates and come party with us in real life and do a bunch of in real life events, the BDG3 pass does that. If you want the ability to compete in a 1200 person fantasy football league with some of your favorite creators and analysts and BDG team members with fucking awesome prizes, the BDG3 pass does that. We're going to play the commercial for it right now. If you want to skip it, timestamps will be there. If you watch it and you're interested, make sure you join the Discord, right? Because this shit goes live next week. There's not a lot of time to get your cheddar correct and get ready because Mint Day is August 15th. All right? I love you. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to the homepage of the BDG three pass that's a tough one to say i'm not gonna lie bdg3 as y'all know this is bdge's very first nft project and the goal of the bdg3 pass very simple to create the most anticipated engaging and documented fantasy football community and experience on the planet this is a community comprised of 1200 people and the bdg3 pass will give you access to that community for one year so what we wanted to do with the bdg3 pass was to give you access into our company into our brand into the people that have created BDGE into what it is today, create an experience around this. So all the things that we're passionate about, we hope to allow you guys to be part of that. Fantasy football is a, a huge part of our brand, obviously. A lot of the content that we make is about fantasy football, but the BDG3 pass is hopefully going to be much more than that. So we're going to be hosting in real life for IRL, for those y'all that don't leave Discord, events, whether it's tailgate meetups at a game, going to some outdoor bars on a Sunday, renting an Airbnb and having you guys come through and party and hang out and watch games and whatever whatever we've done it before it's a good ass time and we want to share that experience with y'all we're really really passionate about making content here and portraying our passions through that content we want to give you guys a chance to be in the content we've fortunately been able to build up a pretty big audience man and we want you guys to be able to leverage that if you're believing in what we're doing as a brand here and you want to be part of this project we want you to be part of our growth we're going to be doing weekly call-in shows we're going to be doing daily content about fantasy football nfl different sports or whatever and we want y'all to be on that with us throughout the season but on top of that, if you followed me for any amount of time, you know how passionate I am about brand building, about content creation, about business. So I'm going to be doing something that I've never done before. And once a month, I'm going to be hosting a workshop. I don't know how many of y'all out there that hold the BDG3 pass are content creators, but once a month, we're going to kick it. Y'all can ask me any questions about platforms, about monetization, YouTube thumbnails, whatever that crosses your mind that you think I might be able to help y'all on, you have access to me. This is a private workshop only pass holders can get into. You guys will be as much a part of the production of 2022 as the dudes in the office here with me and yes if you are a bdg3 pass holder y'all will have the option to join the big dog bash it is a free to play free entry 1200 person fantasy football league that's filled with a ton of cool prizes most of the content that we're making in 2022 will be focused on this fantasy football league so you have the choice to compete in this and one thing that i'm really really excited about that i don't know has ever been done before but we are literally clearing out a room in our office and calling it the BDG3 Holders Lounge. The lounge is gonna be equipped with place to hang out, TV, some video games, a bar. And if you are a BDG3 pass holder, you will have access to that lounge. You're allowed to come into our office, you're allowed to kick it, you're allowed to hang out, and you're allowed to be a part of this brand. I ain't fucking around. It's probably a reckless idea, but that's really what we are here. And we wanna portray that in every project and everything that we do. So if you're in New York and you're like, yo, I hold the BDG3 pass, guess what? You're allowed to come in. You're allowed to work here, allowed to hang out. Maybe play me in a game of Madden. Maybe guest likes lunch. Pretty fucking cool. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about the project overall. We have a lot of really cool 
ideas and utilities that we plan to build on for the next year. So if y'all are like 20% as excited as I am for this, then you should have your fucking shirts tucked in by now. Again, I welcome you to the BDG three pass. All right. Any information that you need, any questions that you have, you're going to join the BDG3 Discord. The link is right down below. It's obviously free to join. Come in there. Come yell at us. We will help you hand by hand, combat wise. Let us tuck our shirts in. I just tucked half of that shirt straight into my ass. It went underneath my underwear. But that's the kind of shit we're bringing today, baby. Tuck our shirts in. We stop yelling. Reflection traps. <laughs> First player on this list, man, and uh, I've officially moved sides on this. Not moved sides, but I haven't. I don't think I've been on the right side of history. I don't think a lot of people are going to be on the right side of history when it comes to Devontae Williams of the Denver Broncos. The further the offseason moves, the more I like this dude. Here, here's what's going to happen. In the comments section, everybody's going to be combative about what they're hearing out of camp. I've heard four or five different reports out of camp, right? We have Cecil, uh, whatever his name is, Cecil Lammy or some, something out of Denver, uh, was saying that it's all Javante Williams and that Melvin Gordon might get cut. And then we have Benjamin Albright, who is another trusted Denver beat reporter who is saying it's like 55-45 in favor of Javante Williams. But I will say one common theme throughout all of them. Javante Williams has been the starter. He has been the clear 1A to Melvin Gordon. At worst, he's been the 55-45. A lot of these reports point to Javante Williams being the 70-30 guy, the 65-35 guy. It's a brand new coaching staff. It took them a long time to sign Melvin Gordon, and they did not sign him to a lot of money, all right? And while I still think it is for sure going to be some sort of committee in Denver, I'm going to be really surprised if they don't come out and just say like, yes, we want the 22-year-old beast, one of the most elusive playmakers in the NFL that has workhorse size, Javante Williams, not to be the guy over 29-year-old Melvin Gordon. I was listening to one of the AFC West podcasts from these beat reporters last week, and this is a quote from the podcast. This is a Denver beat reporter. Last year, it was a true 50-50. This is... This is a 1A, 1B now. Every single period of 11 where they had their group of ones out there, it's been Javante Williams. I would say it is his backfield with a compliment of Melvin Gordon. I almost look at it like a Nick Chubb to Kareem Hunt situation. But if you're ciphering over more of the passing or a decent chunk of Kareem Hunt's passing work to Nick Chubb, that's probably a fantasy player that you want on your team. Last year, these guys had the exact same number of carries, Javante and Melvin Gordon, 203 carries each. Javante got targeted more by a pretty decent chunk. I think he had 14 or 15 more targets on the year, despite being the clear backup to begin the year. And maybe they'll split goal line carries. I don't really know. Melvin's been a good touchdown scorer since his rookie year, so I wouldn't be surprised if he has a pretty significant role down by the goal line, but I'm not even really worried about it because Javante had seven touchdowns last year while not seeing more snaps than Melvin Gordon once through week nine last year. And then from week 10 to week 18, Melvin Gordon only outsnapped him in two of those games, okay? It is clearly going towards a Javante Williams backfield split. All the reports out of camp suggest that, even if they still see it as a split. This offense is going to be so much better. So even if the goal line numbers are split, the opportunity, the overall volume of goal line opportunities is going to be much higher. So he might go from seven goal line carries to 12, even though Melvin Gordon still might have 12 goal line carries as well, all right? As common sense just creeps into me, it's like I just don't see a path where we're looking at the end of 2022 and we're like, yeah, Melvin Gordon was just so good again this year. They split the carries 55-45. The most likely scenario is like by week eight, it's completely Javante's backfield, 70-30 split, and he's a clear league winner at that point in one of probably the more efficient offenses that's going to happen in 2023. So I think this upcoming year, we're going to look back and Javante is going to be a guy that everyone shakes their head at at his third round ADP and being like, this was so fucking obvious after his breakout rookie year. You see the RB1 overall year over year over year typically be like a 25, 26 year or younger player that gets the volume, that gets the passing offense, that gets the uh, touchdown opportunities because they're usually in a good offense. It's, you know, it's Javante's time. Do not let somebody else snipe you on him. I'm feeling the same way with Elijah Moore out of the New York Jets camp. And it's hard to get excited about any individual players on the Jets because they're the Jets. But when you look at who Elijah Moore is as as a player, man. This is per Matt Harmon's reception perception. Moore's 75.2% success rate versus man coverage puts him in the company of receivers who go on to have high-end career success and are destined to enjoy a breakout season sooner rather than later. And when you look at what he did 
after the week six bye compared to before the week six bye. This typically happens to a lot of rookie wide receivers. They don't play immediately in their offense or they have to get their footing first and then they get the break. They get a little bit more um, familiar with what's going on. They have that bye week and then they come out and they're now game planned into the offense. And you could see here PPR points. The seven games after the week six bye, he was averaging 17.7 PPR points as opposed to 4.15 beforehand. And everything hinges on Zach Wilson's success. I know that, but I'm willing to bet that if Zach Wilson is like a top 18 quarterback, which I don't think is really asking too much this year, uh, Moore is going to succeed in a big, big way. Moore is like barely a top 35 wide receiver in drafts right now, and he is immediately the one in this New York Jets offense. Maybe not long term with Garrett Wilson there, but for this year, I'm very, very, very in on Elijah Moore. So we got Javante, we got Elijah Moore. I'm out here. To, I'm just trying to take care of you. All right. And Prize Picks is taking care of us, and they're taking care of you. They're giving you a one day special line right now. It's beautiful. It's Debo Samuel, over 850 receiving yards on the year. Okay. It's an insane line. It's a fucking insane line. They're literally doing it because they want you guys to win. They're like, listen, let's get the lifetime value of a customer is pretty fucking high. They want you guys on the platform, but they're giving you a free win to fucking start off. So if you're not on prize picks yet, what you want to do is go over to prizepicks.com or download the app. The link is right in the description. It'll take you right to the app store. You're going to get on prize picks and you're going to deposit $10 or more, whatever you want to throw down. They're going to give you a hundred percent deposit match with promo code BDGE. Once you do that, you're going to go nail this Debo line. 850 receiving yards. Guys, he had 1,400 last year. I don't care. All the shit I've said about Trey Lance, I don't care if he's a good passer. Debo Samuel, 800. He might have 850 yak yards this year. Literally straight up, he might have 850 yards after the catch. I'm pretty sure he actually topped that last year. I think he had about 850 yards after the catch. They're giving you 850 receiving yards on his line for the season long, all right? So what you need to do when you're in the app, I get a lot of questions about like, I can't find it. There's two sections. There's NFL and there's NFL FUT. That stands for future, not football. I've, I've heard on the stream yesterday. It was uh, corrected by someone very generous. Debo Samuel, over 850 receiving yards on the year is an insane fucking lock. But they're going to be giving us locks like this throughout the summer, special ones just for our fucking audience. So make sure you're on prize picks. Make sure you got notifications on for the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, all that kind of shit. All right, prize picks, promo code BDG, 100% deposit match. And you get our draft guide for free. I'm all in on Mr. Cortland Sutton as well. I cannot get enough of Cortland Sutton. I have multiple Denver Broncos. As you can see, that's the theme. I want to pick players on good offenses led by good quarterbacks. So we have Russell Wilson we love. We have Cortland Sutton we love. We have Javante Williams we love. I guess that's kind of condensed for me because I'm not all in on Judy. I'm not in really on Melvin Gordon. I don't love any of the tight ends because they're talking about using two to three tight ends all the time. So I like Alberto's upside because he's athletic and talented, but hard to say that I'm like really, really in on um, anyone else outside of Cortland Sutton and Javante Williams who are both in on this list and you need to be getting them before they get sniped. Tim Patrick is gone. ACL torn. Price pick still has their line up at five and a half touchdowns on the year for Cortland Sutton. So if you go pair that with Debo's 850 receiving yards plus Cortland Sutton's five and a half touchdowns, you're going to be sitting pretty at the end of the year. And again, we have Cortland Sutton two years removed from the ACL. He'll be a lot more confident, a lot stronger on that leg. Everything out of camp, again, points to Sutton having a big year. Russell Wilson loves throwing to him. Every first read, every first look is going his way. And I compare this a little bit to the uh, to the Cup versus Woods debate last year where I wanted Cup over Woods because if they're similar players and you think they might have similar outputs and the ADPs around the same and you're trying to decide between the two, Sutton's touchdown upside is just much higher than Jerry Judy's. And that's why I lean that way. I'm very in on Rashad Bateman over there in Baltimore. A lot of the sentiment that I've been throwing about uh, throwing out about Baltimore for this offseason is that I'm worried that they're going to shift back to being a really run-heavy offense, and that means they're going to be slow. That means there's not going to be a lot of passing attempts going on in that offense. However, all of the offseason reports have kind of dictated otherwise. We have Gus Edwards, who doesn't look like he's going to be ready for the beginning of the season. We have J.K. Dobbins, who is clearly not, he's not fully cleared for really anything right now. He's not going to be 100% going into the year, which means they're going to continue to have do rely on the passing game. And I'll tell you what, the passing game is anorexic right now. We have Mark Andrews who's going to get his, but behind Rashad Bateman, right? Like you have Hollywood gone, there goes 145 targets in 16 games. I can't yell loudly enough about how much nothing there is behind Rashad Bateman in Baltimore. If you look at the players there, it's Tylen Wallace, who has two career receptions. Devin Duvernay has 53 career receptions. Jalen Moore, James Prochet, Slade Bolden, like Makai Polk, Shamar Bridges, like I'm, I'm making up names at this point, but I'm, but I'm not, you know, I'm not. And that's the fucking thing to take away for, from here. Don't forget that this dude was their first round pick just a year ago with whom they just allowed their 
former first round pick to slide away and let Bateman step right in. Everything I've heard out of reports is literally just like Andrews Bateman, Andrews Bateman, Andrews Bateman. Every pass attempt is going to one of those two. He is going to be funnel targets. He is going. It's going to be gluttonous out there in Baltimore. Uh, do not let someone else grab Rashad Bateman before you. I could say the same thing with Ramondre Stevenson. I've been yelling about him all fucking uh, all summer, and he's someone that continues to go late and late and late and late. You can get him in the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth fucking round, depending on what kind of league you're in. Stevenson has all the makeup of a running back that has like fantasy league winning upside towards the end of the year. Yes, it's a little murky in the beginning, but typically with ambiguous backfields. When the season plays itself out, the most talented guys, you know, rise to the top. No matter how much coffee you pour in to the cup, the cream always rises to the top. Do we understand? And that is what Ramondre Stevenson is. He's the better pass catcher of him and Harris. It's only him and Harris's backfield because James White is hurt. He's not coming back for a minute. We have two rookies behind him that don't really get playtime in Bill Belichick's offense. It's going to be Harris. It's going to be Stevenson. It's going to be a run-heavy offense behind a good offensive line. Two-minute, four-minute drills. It's going to be Stevenson. That's very, very valuable in this offense. All in on Stevenson. And there you have it, y'all. All right? So we have Javante. We have Elijah Moore. We have Rashad Bateman. We've got Ramondre Stevenson. And we've got Cortland Sutton. These are five dudes that guys are probably not completely sold on right now. They know they should be drafting him, but they're, they're still waiting for the big breakout to know how solidified their actual value is. So you guys are just going to keep letting them drop and keep letting them drop and keep letting them drop. Don't do it. Javante Williams, second round. Elijah Moore, fifth, sixth round. Cortland Sutton, fourth round. Rashad Bateman, also fifth, sixth round. Ramondre Stevenson, first fucking round. 102, fuck C-Mac. Ramondre Stevenson, the GOAT for the chip. Let's get this free.